What's up? I'm Silver Sphere, and I'm hanging out with Rob from Front Row Live. Congratulations, new signing with RCA and Little Worry. Um, how did this opportunity kind of happen for you? Um, before we actually like talk about your music, how did this opportunity happen for you? Yeah, thank you. Um, it was definitely a long, a long time to, to get here. I mean, I met my manager in 2017 and we started working together. Um, and he manages Isaac Dunbar, me and Paris. Paris is his only band that's was on a major label when I met him. Um, and it was just like years of putting out music independently. Um, we signed a distribution deal for a little while that definitely helped like get me some recognition um, and gaining fans. And then my manager got the opportunity to work with RCA and they were just interested in signing me. So it was really just a matter of like naturally growing my project to the point where that could happen. The fact that you, uh, your manager had such a, such a good list of artists as well, did you guys kind of get to collaborate in any way? And if so, like, did that, how did that kind of impact you as, you know, becoming a new artist and like kind of learning how to write and release and produce your music? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love all the artists that he manages. Me and Isaac saw, like started working with him around the same time. So we've kind of had the same experience of watching his business grow and kind of growing with him and all that. And we've gone to collab a bunch. Um, but the main reason that I went with him was because he was the only person I met who was realistic with me. You know what I mean? I got so many people saying I was going to win a Grammy in two years or saying they were going to like get me on a song with Diplo like next week. Right. And he was the only one who was like, you're 17. Like we can just chill and get you some sessions and like, release it whatever you know what I mean so it was like that is kind of what drew me to him I think more than like the people he was working with just his mindset on like just being honest and being realistic I mean that makes sense because I, I feel like Lynn from Paris is is like that where she you know she focuses on the reality of things instead of like the dreams of things yeah so that's kind of cool that you have that mindset now. Cause I feel like it's hard, especially with new artists, like the moment like they get signed or the moment like a big opportunity comes, I feel like they forget or they automatically assume that, you know, the world is going to be theirs now. So it's good that right. you have that mentality. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, it's like, as we grow and these opportunities do become realistic, obviously we're thinking about them and thinking about it that way. But just at the point when I was looking for a manager, I was so overwhelmed by all the things that people were saying and I knew that none of it was true. And so to have someone be the exact opposite and just be like, listen, like you might not blow up, but I'm going to try <laughs> was like just the nicest thing, like most reassuring thing to hear. No, that's awesome. And, and now that, you know, you have the label under your belt and you just released your, your latest single, Handle Me, um, what is your creative process and how has that kind of changed now that you have more of a team behind you? Yeah, I mean, it definitely has changed. Um, I've been writing songs since I was like 13, 14. And up until pretty recently, I did it the same, just like in my room with my guitar whenever I needed to get something off my mind. Um, but, which I love to do still, um, but with this EP, it was definitely more about collaboration and about focusing on production and like what I want my sonic world to sound like. Um, so yeah, just like now that there's people on the team, it's more about honing in a little more as opposed to just sitting down and writing whatever is on my mind. It's about creating a world and creating a cohesive project that has visuals that are cohesive and sounds that are cohesive and it's really really fun and interesting because it's a new way that I've never really looked at music I've always looked at it song by song and kind of just thrown it together but now like I feel like this is the first project where it's like I had people around me kind of like encouraging me to make something bigger than that you know so now that you've kind of discovered about your world uh, as an artist, like for those uh, new fans, new music fans that come across your music, like what is that, what is that world? What is that experience like? 
Yeah. Um, well, the Silver Sphere is a very real planet, very far, far away. Um, you're all invited. <laughs> um, the air smells like cinnamon buns. There's no buzz. Everyone cries glitter. It's beautiful. I really recommend it for a vacation. <laughs> um, no, but <laughs> I wanted my music. I created that world before even thinking about the sonic world or whatever, the themes of my music. And so that was really helpful in figuring out what I wanted those more realistic elements of my project to be. Um, I've had mood boards of the Silver Sphere for years, so I feel like finding out what sounds are sparkly to me, or you know what I mean? Finding out what sounds remind me of punching a boy in the face. Just kidding, I don't condone violence. But <laughs> you know what I mean? So I kind of based it all on this like very whimsical world and kind of like tried to bring it all down to reality in things like the sonic elements in my music and the themes and the visuals and all of that. That makes sense. No, don't, it really does. Don't punch boys in the face. I yeah, don't know why please I said don't that. punch anybody. Maybe in the just face. go. Maybe just ghost them. Just ghost. <laughs> yeah, them. there you go. That's how it works. <laughs> but you know, as far as like that sound and and kind of like figuring out or discovering that sound, I feel like once you know that, I feel like it's harder, or maybe it's a lot easier to find a specific producer to work with. Like, did you, did you feel right. that you had to kind of test the waters with multiple producers before you found? one or two or a few that kind of yeah. work with your style i mean i still do work with a bunch of different people um and i think i'll continue to do that like i definitely have found people that i'd like to go back to and work with if i have specific ideas and whatever but there's something about working with different people that brings out different parts of your sound that you probably couldn't create otherwise which i really like um i mean i tend to write most of my lyrics by myself but even just like a, like a production idea that someone has will like spark a feeling or a lyric idea in my mind that like you know what I mean maybe I would never come up with so I really like just working with a bunch of different people and seeing what I can come up with is it difficult to kind of find someone that you kind of that you feel oh. comfortable with as far as like producers go no definitely not I'm pretty open to everyone but I do I do like to go back to to certain people if if I have a very specific idea but I'm I just like to experiment also so when you got together to write Handle Me, um, what was that creative process specifically for the song? And what kind of kickstarted that song in the first place? Yeah, I mean, it, I made that song so long ago. I have to think about it. I think like I was in LA. I usually am like so sad when I'm in LA. So I tend to listen to like really upbeat, happy pop music when I'm here just to like lift my spirits. Um, so I think I just went into the session being like, I was also like going through a bit of a breakup, you could say. It was kind of just like shitty situation. But I think I was like that day I'd been listening to like all the pop girls, like badass women. I was like, I want to make a song like that. Like I've been like down on myself. I've been whatever, just like missing this person. I want to like write a song that's the opposite of that. So we went in and just listened to a bunch of pop music. And I just wrote down how I was feeling. <laughs> So this is like a first listen of your upcoming EP, All My Boyfriends. So like, where, where do you take your, your audience um, when it comes to this EP? Where do I take them? Like, yeah, what can, what can they expect with this EP? Right. Um, well, I wrote it over the course of two years, but I happened to be going through one specific situation with love. Um, and I think throughout those two years and through the songs, I captured the different stages and feelings that come with love pretty well and kind of on accident. So the way that I've been talking about the EP is like, you really get a full story, like a full circle of love. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Sorry. You get like, you really get to see like where my brain was at in the beginning of the situation and like the way that I felt throughout it and the things that I learned all the way through the end of the situation and it wasn't even like I was trying to capture that it just happened that I was going through this experience at the same time as making the project as you you mentioned like this was written a while back so you know now that you go back to these songs and you listen to them do they I mean does the 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 feeling behind each track does that change for you like 
did you have to like kind of rewrite some of these songs because you've grown so much since and you've experienced new things? No, definitely not. I mean, I kind of look at it like a time capsule also because those two years of my life were like, I had just moved off to college. I was like just experiencing a whole new part of life. And so I really didn't, I haven't changed anything. I kind of wanted to keep it the same because when I listen back, it's just such a perfect time capsule and explanation of, of those two years of my life without even like having to try to do it. And so, yeah, I didn't change anything. It's, and it still is, it brings me back. And also I still have all those emotions, whether it's about different relationships or different situations now. So yeah, I still feel very close to it. As a new artist and like writing music and just bringing new people into your team, like what has been the biggest challenge for you? I am kind of stubborn for sure. Um, I think just because I was so used to doing it on my own for so long, I got very comfortable in making every single decision and having to do everything on my own that even though it's really nice to have some of the pressure taken off and have other people making my videos and have, you know what I mean? Other people taking care of other stuff. I definitely had to get over this idea that only I could do everything the right way. <laughs> and I'm like that with everything else. I was like that in school, like with group projects, I was like that, whatever, like when I would get in fights with my brother, just whatever it is. But this is just definitely an experience where I'm learning to kind of like let go of that feeling that I'm the only one who can do everything. <laughs> the last, I'm, the last... I'm so stubborn. It's like, it's actually <laughs> a problem. I like want to do my own makeup and styling and everything from shoots. They're like, Sophie, like you can't, you need to, pose for the pictures <laughs> which is interesting because i feel like i feel like it would be difficult to work with various producers and earlier you mentioned that you you like kind of working with different producers yeah yeah i mean i guess that's different because it's just um that's like the the writing process is so different every single time you do it anyways that you kind of don't know what to expect but with stuff like album covers and, <laughs> and outfits and styling and all that I'm I definitely don't I have a hard time letting anyone <laughs> anyone in on that <laughs> <laughs> well as far as like um as far as the live show like what is that like for you I know you got to um to go out with Omar Apollo um so what was that experience like for you and like what can fans expect uh, for your live show I mean that was actually the craziest two months of my life it was so amazing um Sorry, I was just thinking about it. That was crazy because I had only played like two shows in my whole life before that, and they were like 300 cap venues. And then next That's thing I know, good I'm for like, just two shows. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> but then I was next thing you know, I'm driving to Oakland for the first day of tour, and there's like 1,800 people in front of me, and and they're all so energetic. It's it's like the most magical thing. Also, live shows saved my life growing up like I it was my favorite thing to go to shows and see my favorite band so to suddenly feel like I was on the other side of that was like so just like mind-boggling um and for the new live shows obviously I have more music I have really crazy uh visuals set up for the silver sphere so I really really when the time comes I really want to just like transport the people who come to the show to the silver sphere fully for however long my set is you know what i mean i want it to be like full immersive experience they have to like walk in through a rocket ship like <laughs> i'll have i have to think through it a little more but i'm gonna figure it out glitter everywhere i have some i have some visions it'll definitely be a new world yeah i feel like, I feel like you're gonna work hard on that definitely <laughs> awesome well congratulations with uh your signing congratulations with uh the new single and definitely looking forward to this upcoming ep do you know when this might be coming out um i know it's in the fall right i'm not sure the specific day but i have another single coming out called ghost in september and then the ep will be out after that awesome so remember you gotta ghost them you don't punch them yeah ghost <laughs> <laughs> you can quote me on that. <laughs>